we made a visit to an incredible place, a collection probably unmatched in the United States for uh, American decorative arts, and especially 18th, 19th century furniture. The incredible collection of Henry Francis DuPont at Winotour Museum in Winotour, Delaware. When you visit there, you better plan several hours because you will be knocked off your socks at the grounds, the museum, the collection. You get to walk around the house. But I'm going to share some of that. We've got some little video clips we took not too long ago. And I wanted to walk you around, give you a glimpse of Winotour Museum, part one. So here we go. Enjoy. So there we are. That's the building from a distance. And our thanks go to Jackie Killian and Kathy Griffin. Gillis. Right? Gillis. Gillis, sorry. Kathy Gillis. <laughs> well, there's the map. It's west of Philadelphia. And this is the grounds when you walk up these amazing massive trees. But look at the building. It's made to house thousands of objects. In fact, there's 170 plus rooms in there. And yes, the trees are quite large. <laughs> I had to check them with my six foot wingspan and just <laughs> check that out. So you enjoy outside and then you step inside. It's surreal. The room you enter on the tour is a cobblestone courtyard with genuine facades. Here, this one is from the Red Lion Inn that was in Delaware. And inside, the first two floors are actually preserved, so you can go in as if you're entering that in. And then other sections of the tour, you see this grand spiral staircase, and at Christmas time, you wouldn't believe how beautifully it's decorated. But most of all, what I enjoy when visiting Winotour is the furniture. And I'm telling you, it goes on and on and on. And these long hallways, what floor was this, the seventh? Sixth? Uh, yes, I believe it was the seventh. So you have all these chests that you wish you could stop and look at, but I couldn't stop. I, I just had to move along on the tour. It was, this was a <laughs> private little tour, but it was just incredible. Well, you just go down the hallway, like through archway store. after mm -hmm. archway, and there are rooms on each side that have been scaled to house the furniture and decorated and then you get to the end, you're like Maxwell Smart walking through the door. And there it is, bracketed, a beautiful block front shell chest on chest that was actually made in Providence around late 1700s. And there we walked into another room. This is actually Henry Francis DuPont's wife's room. Was it Catherine? Catherine, I think so. And I spied across the room some very familiar shield back chairs because it wasn't uncommon for us to have commissions from collections, like antique collections, like Winotaur. So this is from a collection of federal furniture written by Charles Montgomery. I had a client say, could you make the one on page, whatever. And I actually was able to pull the dimensions and drawings for the shield back chair and pull it off. And she, the, Kathy has shown us the upholstery. This is the book, The Federal Period by Charles Montgomery, the Winotaur Collection. And there's a chair in the book. And there's my finished chair. <laughs> so it's hard to tell the difference. Of course it is. <laughs> and then we had a little surprise, almost a taste of home in New Hampshire. We came across this gorgeous settee that was actually a prize object in Henry Francis DuPont's collection. It was made in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's a curved settee that was built to fit into the curve of a spiral staircase. There are, there are like eight shield backs on this chair, six along the back and two on the ends. And this has the incredible distinction of being the first cover photo on Antiques Magazine in 1922. And that photo, that is actually in the staircase of the John Pierce house in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Of course, I had to get my nose under there. And I saw the block front uh, <laughs> curve, I mean the brick laid curve around the back like you'd expect in White Pine. And then this 
you can't you can see this actual chair he built that curve for this settee but you can visit the simon pierce house if you go to church it's actually part of the middle street church in portsmouth new hampshire and the spiral staircase is still there. Now, that, I think she said John Pierce, is that John right? Pierce, John yeah, Pierce, I meant to yes. say that. Yes. This is a beautiful Chippendale room. Oh, oh, so sweetly <laughs> appointed with Philadelphia pieces, mainly Chippendale chairs. And then I spied this incredible pie crust table. Look at that mahogany. Is that stunning? You have a crotch on one side, and it appears to be a two-board top, and... Then we got a little closer to leg. And if you were at the Epic Weekend a couple years ago um, for Alan Breed's presentation, he showed carving that leg. And this is Alan holding the leg up. He showed his carvings on that leg, quite involved to make those legs. Well, after you're done your tour, we'll talk more about that. You can check out the grounds. Absolutely Unbelievable. spectacular. Unbelievable. Everywhere you walk is a photograph and you can walk into that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did I tell that, that right. Time. And then you can walk off to the side <laughs> and chill a bit in a strategically placed bench and take in the view. You would and think that was scripted. It was it not scripted. <laughs> I was just walking around. And the camera lady was just on top of her game. Well, you can tell. We had, we had an absolutely incredible time there. We did. Um, oh I goodness. wish could have stayed longer. If you go, we, well, first we're going to put a link to Winotour Museum. It's just northwest, as I said, of Wilmington, Delaware. So if you're coming down 95 anytime, you can plan, plan the better part of a day, actually. Or if you can just stay a few hours, you can take the house tour, which is like 75 minutes. And there is a museum with uh, more permanent... Uh, displays that's not in the house. It's an additional museum where you can see and, and get uh, more of a understanding of the progression of furniture styles throughout the years, construction, materials, all that. Really great. And then you can walk the grounds. So you can see how... Gardens after gardens. The gardens are oh. incredible. And those were all designed by Henry Francis DuPont as well. And actually up the road... There's Longwood Gardens. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, mm -hmm. Longwood Gardens. If you love gardening, like many do, check that out while you're there. That's breathtaking as well. So, very inspirational. We, I'm telling you, we showed you like just a little glimpse. We Min just minuscule amount. Yes. Wasn't sure how long to make this, and we're putting things together here on the road. But we have, we have a treasure trove. I actually learned about this program that you can look at on Winotour Museum's website. What is it called, like the apprentice? Oh, goodness. It, it was it's a okay. student program of, uh, you can go in and do an internship, it, yeah. that kind of stuff. It's like a work study. You can submit, it doesn't matter who you are, you can submit um, a proposal to go there and with some aim in particular field of study. And you can spend, I think, a few weeks and you actually get a stipend for being there and studying whatever and, and they will evaluate your proposal. But you can find out more about that on their website. I actually asked, I said, am I too old for this? <laughs> and she said, no. I said, well, thank you very much. Might be doing I may someday. take you up on that. I would love to go down there and I don't know if they would allow this, but wouldn't it be fun if we, if we catalog that in the making of a piece? I think the, um, the what's that called, the domain, uh, the public domain, those pieces are in the public domain, even though they're in Francis's collection, I think. I don't know if I'm totally right on that. But if so, we could actually measure, photograph, and I would show you the whole process of making a piece of interest. If you have a particular piece you're interested in, go ahead and uh, make a suggestion. Um, mm -hmm. We're having a blast on this epic adventure, uh, talking about the art of chair making, and of course I was drawn to the chairs in this video, but it was an unbelievable assortment of chests mm. and tables. Crazy. And we didn't show you hardly anything. Can Sorry. you give a tiny brief background as to why all of these pieces exist in this building? Oh, um, thank you, yeah. Well, Henry DuPont. Francis DuPont, who was born, I think, in um, 1880, 81. He, he, uh, after, he was an heir of the DuPont family and all, 
and he went to Harvard, of course, and mm -hmm. studied, I think it was horticulture, not so much the, the antique collection, but he traveled in Europe uh, pre-World War I and learned a lot about gardens and all, all that. But when he got home, he took an obsessive interest <laughs> in collecting American decorative arts, which began about 1920, 1921. And he collected so many pieces. This is when really great 18th century pieces were available. And he really only wanted them from the golden age of furniture prior to the Industrial Revolution when things started to be machine made. So he had this incredible collection and he didn't have enough room to store it and show it. So they just started adding on to the house till it became over 170 rooms. And think of it. Nine floors. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. That first room we looked at was counted as one. The one that was a big cobblestone in the facades here, one. But there's nine floors, but the tour only takes you, I think, on three different floors. Like I said, it's 75 minutes, so it's really um, appropriately. Yeah. There's a self-tour option you can take. Um, she, I think she said fourth and fifth floors, um, so you can go on that. But you, you really you get just a minuscule taste even. And he was trying to reproduce eras of of time with furniture. Yeah. And, right. He would take um, collections of period, yeah. and then he would the actual paneling on the wall, yeah, the curtains, the, the all the um, the chinaware, whatever, all all the textiles, the rugs, everything was made to fit the period. So you walk into a room and you just wish you could stay a lot longer because mm. you can't take it in. And before you know it, you walk into the next room and it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. He was actually hired by, um, or brought on to lead the, uh, what was it? Um, when Jacqueline Onassis was in the White House in 1961, yeah. she started a revitalization of the White House collection. She thought it was quite drab and she was probably right. It didn't have proper period pieces and antiques. So she actually contacted Henry Francis DuPont and he became the lead of the revitalization of the furniture in the White House. And when you go there today, many of the choices that are cataloged and in that collection were because of Henry Francis DuPont. One other book I want to mention is by jo Joseph Downs. This was the go-to book. We probably built more pieces from this when I was working with Pug Moore, who I talked about last week, than any other book. It covers the Queen Anne and Chippendale period, represents those in the Winotour collection. And it was by Joseph Downs, who was the current curator prior to Charles Montgomery. So that has similarly really great photos, uh, but really usually only one shot of each piece and a nice paragraph of description of its provenance, where it came from, dimensions, the, the kind of woods it was made of, any notable things that might help you reproduce it or help identify. So of course they talk about whether or not they have signatures as well. So that's, oh, I think, man. all I got, it's, but have we had any questions? It was just delicious to look at. And uh, people are asking about tours. Go to their website and look at some of the specs of what they're offering because naturally things have changed since COVID. Um, oh, it's wide they, open. They altered some things. Yes, but they they have the self tour of, I believe it was room uh, floors four and five. Yeah, and I think that might cost more too because you're be, allowed to roam could relatively be. free, um, um, but you're still not allowed to touch things. When you take the regular tour, there are the, the guide ropes as you'd expect, um, but you are allowed to take photographs and videos. I also, wanted to mention Boardman made that round settee that was in the Winotaur. And that was one of the most excited pieces that Henry Francis DuPont, he was most excited about that. I mean, think of it, to build this curve into the wall that perfectly mirrors so the beautiful. piece of furniture. A lot of work to change the whole hallway to, to be fitting for that. Uh, can you repeat what the name of the James Down book was? We will put a link in there, but uh, Joseph Down, sorry. Furniture from the Queen Anne and Chippendale periods at Winotour. If you get some of that in there, it's going to pop up. Check out Amazon, maybe on eBay. You can find used books. That's what I've done. I have Pug's original, and it's kind of tattered. And some of the patterns, a lot of the patterns, actually, 
they'll be written, you know, in his pencil, and his, it would just say Downs number 113. And that's just telling you the frame number or the plate number of the photograph of that piece. So that template is to build that chair when you turn it out. But you do need a lot of other information, and that's why uh, nobody really wanted Pug's templates when he closed the shop, except yours truly. <laughs> He'll be back in the shop soon enough, but we're having fun. This is kind of fun. This is fueling my tank, and I think you'll find getting out, getting to a museum will have the same effect on you. Also, you. check out our website, epicwoodworking.com. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, we look forward to seeing you next time right here on Shop Night Live. All right. Hey, everyone. Take care. <laughs>